Okay. Welcome back to the exciting book of Genesis. Today we're going to be speaking from chapter 20. Uh, let's jump right in. Genesis 20, verse 1. Genesis 20, verse 1 says, And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwell between Kadesh and Shur and journey in Gerar. Now, some of you all may recall from, from the weeks prior, you know, that we spoke about the spiritual significance of, of, um, of these things, you know, and how it related to other events that would happen in scripture as well as those that, that still are to happen for you know, the word is just as our Messiah was uh, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It speaks to the past, the present, and the future. And so we were looking at some of these things and considering them from their past perspective, from uh, spiritual perspective, as well as the futuristic perspective, spiritual perspective, and how it pertains to the believers now today. And we spoke about uh, the semblance of Lot and, and and his daughters and everything. And, you know, I just want to, we're going to touch on that again a bit today. But before, let's consider the first part of verse 1. It says, And Abraham journeyed from thence. From thence, from where? Okay. Um, you know, that was two chapters ago. You may have forgotten where he journeyed from. So let's take a look at Genesis 18, 1, and it tells us, it says, And Yahuwah appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And we talk, spoke about culturally how sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day was usually during during noontime. It was uh, um, when the sun was as high as, and then it was... Uh, Right after dinner time, and usually that was uh, when, when uh, people of the, uh, that time took their naps. And so, uh, we see in verse two of chapter eighteen, it speaks about him lifting up his eyes. But let's concern ourselves with where he was. You know, it says that Yahuwah appeared to him in the plains of Mamre, and you know, this is what happened to Abraham, and and. When we look at it in that sense, it's just a historical account, you know. But when we look at it from a prophetic sense or in the spiritual sense, you know, then it speaks volumes. You know, now we spoke of Lot. Uh, well, before I get there, let's deal with Mamre. Um, Mamre means to be lusty. It comes from Mara, number forty-seven fifty-four, meaning to rebel. Okay, so we see here Abraham and Sarah are dwelling in a place of rebellion, in a place of that 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 they were uh, satisfying their lust, you know. So, and this is this is just a spiritual picture that's being painted here, and it says, and he sat in the tent door. Now. That's the door of the house, you know, and so we consider who the door is. We know that that's um, the door ultimately speaks to Messiah. He's the door of Yah's house. house. I mean, for, for he told us, I am the door, you know, so. And it was in the heat of the day, you know. Now, thematically speaking, we've learned that Lot spoke to Yahuda and the priesthood. Okay, and when we consider Lot as Yahuda in the priesthood, we can see where, like back in Genesis 12, it, it taught us that they went to that they went to um, to Misraim or Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and when they come out, they come out of Egypt, you know. Um, and Lot goes and settles in Sodom. Now I want you to think about, about this, you know, for a second. If 
lot really does speak to to um, the house of Judah and the priesthood, then who would Abraham speak to? Anyone? Any guesses? No, not, not Moses. Yes, Israel, the house of Israel. You know, um, now Abraham means what? Father of many nations. Israel was what? Father of many nations. You know, as well as, you know, the combination of that became many nations, right? You know, so there is a thematic parallel there, you know, and when we consider, you know, um, now think about this, you know, when Abraham and Lot went into Mitzrayim, when they went into Egypt, remember they went into Egypt? That was back in, like, chapter 12. You know, they went into Egypt, Lot was with them, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a spiritual picture of the house of Judah and the house of Israel going into Egypt, right? Now, they leave out of Egypt and they leave out, you know, enriched, right? Yeah. Now, think about the house of Judah and the house of Israel when they went into Egypt, when they came out, were they not enriched? Matter of fact, when, when uh, Abraham and Lot came out, they had so much stuff yeah. that they couldn't even dwell together anymore. Yeah. And they right. separated. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now think about, think about the house of Israel and the house of Yahuda When they came out of Mitzrayim, you know, they did separate. Did they not? Yeah. Okay, now, Lot went and settled where? Sodom. Sodom. All right. Sodom is spiritually what? Egypt. No. Sodom spiritually speaks to what city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Exactly. Okay. You know, so, again, the house of um, Israel and the house of Yahudah, they came out of Mitzrayim, you know, and where did Judah go and settle? but in Jerusalem, which is spiritually Sodom. Right? Yeah. You know, that's uh, Revelation 8, 11, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you see you see the parallel, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, now, here it is. Lot is in Sodom. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is in the land of Canaan. Um, dwelling in the plains of Mamre in rebellion, mm -hmm. satisfying his lust thereof, you know, and then, and not to mention, you know, he was sleeping, and he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Yah and his two witnesses. Right. You know, this is just a picture a prophetic picture of the Messiah coming to the world, even as it was prophesied years and years and years, right? You know, now, when the Messiah came, he says that he was sent to where? sheep of Israel. Absolutely, the house of Israel, which Abraham represents. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. You know, so this is a beautiful picture if you can see it. Because not only is it a historical account, not only does it have a present day value, it also have a, has a future value. It teaches us what was, what is, and what is to come. Even as all scripture does. But this is just such a beautiful picture, and the parallel is 
It's there, and it's been there, and you think about it, it's been there for thousands of years, and even, even the, the, the house of the house of Yahuda and the house of, of Israel, they had this all along, mm -hmm. you know, telling them what was going to happen. But they didn't have eyes to see. Right. You know, and it's and it's uh it's it's not it's not hard to see why they didn't have eyes to see for you know when Lot went and dwelt and after he left from Sodom, that is, you know, after he, he left out of uh Sodom he went and dwelt in a mountain, in a cave, you know, which speaks to darkness. You know, a mountain speaks to a nation, you know, and cave speaks to darkness. So he was a nation dwelling in darkness. You know, but here it is, when Yah comes, the house of Israel, they're in rebellion, and they're asleep. But Abraham lifts up his eyes and and he sees. He sees Yah and he sees the two witnesses. You know, and this all played out again, you know, during the time of the Messiah, but it still is going to play out again for the culmination of the prophecy. It's going to happen a third time, even as three is spiritual completeness. It's not until the third time that it will be spiritually complete. You know, because Yah is uh, is prophesied to come visit the earth yet again, is he not? Yes, he is. So, you know, um, we we see he came he came the first time, he came the second time, and he's gonna come the third time. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's gonna be the last time. You know, so. Now, with that in mind, with this, with this, with this in mind, here it is. You know, Yah comes, Abraham. He's in, he's in the plains of Mamre. He's sitting in the door, um, in the heat of the day. He's sleepy. He looks up. You know, here it is. Yah comes. Now, this is, this is the kicker right here, Sarah. Because Sarah, Sarah is, is you know, she's a very special character. You know, and she speaks to her name. Uh, was first Sarai, you know, which meant princess, but then Sarah, which speaks to being a queen, you know, um, or a ruler. So now you can see the house of Israel and the ruler, you know. So now who was the ruler of the house of Israel? Besides Yah. <laughs> Second in charge, if you would. <laughs> no, um, so I was at one time, but that's not what I'm looking for. Predominantly speaking, for generation after generation after generation. Judah. No, Judah. That's in the house of Judah. We're we're talking about the house. Okay, stop guessing, folks. You know, stop stop guessing. Put your thinking caps on. For a minute. Now we're not talking about the house of Judah, you know. We're talking about the house of Israel after they separated. Who ruled over them? Just like, just like uh, Judah ruled over the uh, the southern ten tribes. Yeah. Who ruled over oh, Jeroboam? Oh. Ephraim. Yeah. That you're both right there. Yeah. That, that's what I'm looking for. Jeroboam was from Ephraim, you know, and that's who ruled over them. All their kings predominantly was from Ephraim, just like, you know, beginning with Jeroboam. He was the first one. Yah chose Ephraim to rule over the house of Israel. Everybody with me? That was the ruler of the house of Israel, you know. In the same sense that Sarah was the ruler of the house of Israel. That was married to the house of Israel. Now, Ephraim, originally, you know, he was, uh, he was, 
half Egyptian and half mm -hmm. and half uh, Israelite. Well, in the same sense, so was Sarah. You know, because before Yah called uh, Abraham out, you know, she was pagan, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so you can see the same parallel even even within within that, and she will, she does did and, and, and does rule over. And she's also a picture of the Ecclesia, which was also sent to the house of Israel. Right? right. You know, when Messiah sent his apostles out, he told them, go yeah. only to the lost sheep of Israel yeah. at first. Yeah. And then eventually he sent them, you know, to to everywhere. So, Yahoo included, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just trying to Make this parallel so that so that you guys can see, so that you can follow along with the story. Because if you, you know, because it's imperative in order for you to understand, mm -hmm. you know, what the spiritual picture is and, and what Yah is trying to teach us. You know, so uh, I already con considered when Yah and his witnesses they went to Abraham. Oh yeah, um, where was Sarah? During this visitation, in the tent, absolutely. So she was in the house yeah. of Israel, even as Ephraim was in the house of Israel after they left uh, Mitzrayim or Egypt, right? Yeah. You know, so she was in the tent. What part of the tent was she in? See, because we see that Abraham was also in the tent. He was in the door of the tent. What part of the tent was Sarah in? She was inside. She was in, she was in the private side, the private part. You know, she was in the set apart part of the house. See, because the woman's quarters is set apart. Yeah. When you go into one of the ancient tents, the women's quarters is set apart, it's closed off. Right. It's not open to the public. But the door of the tent, you know, is open to the public, and this is usually where the man would have have his company and everything, you know. And if you have eyes to see, you can see that Sarah was in the set apart, the holy part of the house of Israel. That's a beautiful picture. That's a beautiful picture. When Yah came, Sarah was in the set apart part of um, the house of Israel. And she represents the ecclesia who was also in the set apart part of the house of Israel. You know, and just as she was on the private part of the house, you know, you see Yah speaking to her privately. Showing that she was in the private part of the house the set apart aspect of the house. It's a beautiful, it's, if you have the eyes to see it, it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. You know, so, uh, that's, that's part of um, verse one. <laughs> you know, and, and also consider only after Elohim witnesses left was Sodom or Jerusalem destroyed. You know, and in conjunction with, you know, with Sodom being spiritual, Jerusalem, you know, after Yah and his witnesses left, you know, Jerusalem was destroyed. You know, in 70 AD. You know, so it's real important to understand that because this is where the story picks up, you know, in chapter 20. You know, Abraham journey, journey, ah, journeying whatever. He's leaving from thence. <laughs> journeying. <laughs> he's journeying from thence. So he's coming out of rebellion, right? He's coming out of rebellion and fulfilling in, in his lusty ways. And he's going toward the south country. So, now when we consider as going towards the south country, south is Negev. In the Hebrew, number 5045, mm. meaning to be parched. Mm. And it speaks to a drought. Now, when the house of Israel 
when they when, when they left from out of rebellion after the Messiah came, they truly did go toward the south. They went towards a towards a drop. You know, now wasn't wasn't a drought for bread and water and wine, but for the word of the Elohim. You know, for a while, been in a drought, haven't we? Mm -hmm. You know, the house of Israel has been in a drought. They've become parched. You know, they're dwelling betwixt a place, between Kadesh and Shur, and they, and they sojourn in Gerar. Okay, now, Kadesh means holy. You know, uh, sure speaks to a wall and comes from a route to travel. So it speaks of really a traveling wall in our actuality. You know, so you see them dwelling in a place between holiness and protection. You know, a wall speaks to protection. You know, when you ask God to put a hedge of about you or a wall about you, you're asking them to protect you. Okay? So, there's a journey betwixt holiness and protection. You know, in a place called Gerar, which means to drag off roughly. So now, we see them in a place betwixt holiness and being protected, yet, they're dwelling in a place in which they're dragged off roughly. You know, and this happened too. You know, when you consider when you consider um, the house of Israel after they left out of, after um, Sodom was destroyed you know, in 70 AD, spiritual Sodom where Jerusalem was destroyed, you know, there was a drought. It was so so bad that uh, um, it's even spoken about in Scripture. You know where we see Apostle Paul taking up a collection for those that was in Jerusalem. You know because the drought. You know now after 70 A.D. they were literally dwelling in garage. They were literally dragged off roughly, literally. You know, and they were taken into um, captivity, sold as slaves. You know, many of them um, flee, uh, flee the land. You know, but this, they literally dwelt in Gerar. You know, but this was prophesied. This is the amazing aspect of Yah's word. You know, now here it is. We're reading this. You know, in hindsight, you know, but this was always there available to the saints of Yah. You know, and, and undoubtedly some of them understood it and some of them was trying to forewarn, you know, but even as today, you know, those who are blind and, and, and deaf just can't hear and they can't see. You know, but it's always been here. We're talking about Genesis. This is the Pentateuch. This is, this is some of the earliest writings. And this was here. Talking about a time so far down the line. How amazing is that? Yeah. Or I should say, how yeah amazing is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is just incredible. Yah's word is just, ah, it's, it's just Yah's. I know I'll be making up words, but anyway. <laughs> Genesis 20, verse 2 and 3, he says, And Abraham said of Sarah's wife, She is my sister. And Abraham said of Sarah's wife, She is my sister. And Amalek, king of Gerah, sent and took Sarah. Now, this, now Sarah, like, like I said, ultimately speaks to, you know, those holy ones that's in the house of Israel that uh, ultimately speaks to the ecclesia. You know, and this is actually a prophetic picture of Sarah being drug off. You know, 
and it actually happened. In, in very large respect, it actually happened. Um, now here it is, it says, Ambalek, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah, and just from a cultural um, standpoint, you know, the Eastern kings thought it was their right to have all the most beautiful women in their harem. Now never mind that uh, Sarah was over 90 years old at this time. <laughs> she was still drop dead gorgeous, you know, so much so that the king had to have her, you know. It says in verse 3, but Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night. See, and this is the awesome part, you know, because when we look, Sarah representing the ecclesia, she's, she's drug off roughly. And that has happened. Where is Sarah now today? She's missing in action. You know, there's a lot of people that call themselves the church, but they're not the church. You know, they're not the church. They're not doing what the church was doing. You know, Sarah is missing in action. You know, she's drug off. You know, but remember, she's dwelling betwixt a place that is holy and protected. So she's still, wherever she is, she's still holy and she's still protected. You know, and verse 3 says, but Elohim came to Ambalek in a dream by night. See, and this is where we are now today. We're waiting for Yah to come to Abimelech in the night. Show him that vision. And he said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. She belongs to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. That is Abraham. Abimelech, his name means my father is king. You know, my, my father is king or my father is ruler. You know, and there are some, uh, some individuals in scripture who thought their father was king too. You know, and that's who Abimelech aligns with. Let's take uh, a look at Yochanan 8, 41 through 44. Uh, my next reader, please. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father even Elohim. Yahshua said unto them, If Elohim were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from Elohim. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know that, you know, when Israel came out of Mitzrayim, that they came out of mixed multitudes? Right? You know, now there was some, uh, from that point all the way on, there was a mixture of people into not only um, the house of Yahuda, but also the house of Israel. Amen? Amen. Now, some of these people, somehow, some way, had gotten into positions of power. And these are who Yahushua is speaking to here. You know, and we see further in Revelations, it speaks of those who, are, who call themselves Yahuda but are not but out of the synagogue of um, Satan. You know, here it is. You know, they thought their father was king. They thought their father was El. You know, um, verse 41 says, uh, we be not born of fornication, but we have one father, even Elohim. You know, but Yahshua says, him, Elohim were your father, you would love him. And then he lets them know, you're not of uh, my father, you're of your father, the devil. 
and the lust of your father, ye will do. You know, uh, in conjunction with that, let's consider 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, faint not, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Elohim deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. You know, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, mm -hmm. in whom the God of this world have blinded yeah. the minds yeah. of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who is the image of Elohim, should shine unto them. Hallelujah. And this Hallelujah. is the God that was their father. Even the God of this world, even Satan, the dragon, mm -hmm. the devil. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't understand, you know, that there is a God of this world. Mm -hmm. You know, and he has children as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what the parable of Yahshua was, was speaking about, you know. So, we have to, con we have to um, consider that. And, and so, Abimelech aligns, aligns with uh, those who recognize him as their, as their God, as their king. Now, let me have my next reader read verses 4 through 7 of Genesis 20. Um, Verses 4 through 7. But Amalek had not come near to her, and he said, Adonai, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, She is my sister, and she, even she herself, said, He is my brother, and the integrity of my heart and innocence, innocence of my hands have I done. And Elohim said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know thou didst this in integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. That's good right there. Thank you. Now, now we see that Abimelech had not come near near her. So wherever Sarah is, you know, she's still dwelling in a place betwixt being holy and protected. You know, but she's just not, she's not allowed to go back to her husband yet. You know, uh, the house of Israel, Abraham. Now, we see in verse 6, it says, For I also will help thee from sinning against me, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Yah is protecting her. Can you see that? Yeah. You know, now let's consider the ecclesia. You know, this is an excerpt from 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9 um, that Apostle Paul was uh, speaking. He says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You know, can't you see that Yah was protecting Sarah? Yeah, yeah. You can see in that Yah was protecting yeah. Sarah, has been protecting Sarah. You know, and we're longing and waiting for the day when the fulfillment of verse 7 comes about. Genesis 27 says, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. Okay. There's coming a time when the wife will have to be restored. The wife will have, have to be restored. And we know that um, even though he restores, Abimelech will eventually restore Sarah, you know, and he spared during that time. Eventually, he becomes the enemies of, uh, of the house of Israel. And eventually, uh, going to have to get destroyed anyway. 
But this is the point that I want to hark upon, is that there's going to be a restoration of the house of Israel's wife, that is, its ruler, its queen, the ecclesia. That's what we're waiting on. That's when you'll see, you know, the things that you saw when the ecclesia was first on the, on the earth. You know, that's when you'll see them doing the great excerpts. That's also when you'll see, you know, it'll be uh, great tribulation. But Yah is well able. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is a beautiful picture of the end time, the end time prophecy. Let me have my next read, read verses 8 through 13, please. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended, and what have I offended thee? that thou hast brought me, brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou, that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt show, me, show unto me at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, he is my brother. Okay, so... Consider in verse 11, it says, Surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place. Abraham, you know, thought for sure the fear of Elohim wasn't in the place where Sarah will be held. You know, and so that teaches us that likewise, you know, in the, in the last days, surely, you know, the house of Israel is going to surely believe that the fear of Elohim is not in that place. You know, but Yah is going to put the fear of Elohim in that place. Even as he put the fear of Elohim in Abimelech. You know, Abimelech just didn't hearken unto, unto the dream and because Yah, you know, spoke to him. You know, there was some other stuff that's that's to come that you're gonna see. He had a little encouragement. <laughs> he had a little encouragement to adhere to, you know, what Yah was saying. You know. But verse 12 says, and yet indeed, you know, this is Abraham, the house of Israel speaking, saying, yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. Now, with that, in conjunction with our parallel, let's consider that and see if it fits. You know, the house of Israel is married to Ephraim. Indeed, she is. His sister. Is she not? Yeah. You know, um, now, Ephraim, you know, ruled from this, uh, a city. You know, the city that Ephraim ruled from was Samaria. And spiritually speaking, Samaria, uh, Yahweh refers to as Ahola. You know, and and to Jerusalem as Aholabah. And speaks of their, you know, uh, their naughty ways, I should say. You know, but point being is that it is referred to as as a, um, a feminine gender, and in, in spiritually speaking, it says, "Yet indeed she is my sister." And truly, in the house of Israel, Ephraim, um, in the feminine sense, would be a sister. You know having the same father, but a different mother. You know, because uh, Ephraim and Manasseh was adopted by Yahweh. You know, so they did have the same father, but different mothers. 
and it says, and she became my wife. You know, and verse 13, and it came to pass when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house, I said, this is the kindness which thou shalt show unto me at every place where we shall come, say of me, he is my brother. So again, you know, we see the truth about Sarah being hidden. Even as the truth about Sarah in the world now today is still hidden. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just a prophetic picture of that. Um, now next read of verses 14 through 18, please. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For Yahuwah had fast closed up the womb of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Okay. So, now, you know, it's real important that, that we get this because this speaks to, prophetically, thematically, this speaks to the time after the Messiah had come to the earth. So it speaks to the time that we're living in. You know, because Sarah is still being held, because we, you know, unless somebody's seen her, you know, uh, <laughs> she hasn't been spotted anywhere, right? You know, it says, and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. This is just a picture of the Gentiles coming into the fold. Because these men servants, women servants, you know, uh, the sheep, the oxen, they all became a part of the house of Israel. You know, when Sarah went home, they were all a part of the house of Israel. Amen? Yeah. You know, now, it says, And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee to dwell where it pleases thee. Now, I want you to know that, you know, this is, I can actually see, spiritually speaking, I can actually see this actually happening even now. You know, the, the, the fact that we're here today, you know, doing what we do, keeping the commandments of Yahshua as well as Torah, you know, is proof that this prophecy is coming true, even in our day and time. You know, and the Gentiles have come into the fold, but here it is, it says, and Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you, dwell wherever you please. And unto Sarah he said, now this is huge, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Now, a thousand speaks to full maturity. Silver speaks to redemption. So what we're what we're seeing here is the full redemption of uh, the the redemption of fully mature a fully mature house of Israel. And it says, "Behold, he is a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other." Thus she was reproved. See now, this is her. Repu reproof or rebuke, you know, for telling the lie. You know, she, uh, the house of Israel is is to be a covering of the eye. So in other words, when people look at her, they're going to see the house of Israel. You know, they're not going to see her. She's hidden. She's hidden. You know, She's a cup. Um, the house of Israel or Abraham is going to be a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all others. So whoever look at her, all they're going to see 
is Abraham. You know, now, culturally speaking, you know, it speaks of her being veiled. You know, um, even as the Eastern women of the day, many of them are still veiled. But spiritually speaking, it speaks of Sarah, the ecclesia, being hidden within the house of Israel. And it says, so Abraham prayed unto Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. And that's when, you know, after they begin to bear children, it says, for Yahuwah had fast closed up all the wounds of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. You know, so they won't start bearing children. Abimelech won't start bearing children until he lets Sarah go. And when he let Sarah go and he began to start reproducing, that's when all the proverbial crap hits the fan. Because that's when, you know, uh, the son of perdition will be revealed. You know, and all the end time prophecies will begin to uh, unfold themselves. If you would. Well, that's all I have for you today. Pray with a blessing.